So let's do an example for the design of steel components by specifically looking at beams and using the yielding criteria. So we will focus on strictly the flexural strength, the design flexural strength. So we know here we have the W21 by 62 beam shown has continuous lateral supports making the lateral torsional buckling not an issue. So since we have continuous lateral supports, we know lateral torsional buckling will not be an issue. So we do not have to worry about that for the purposes of this question. So we know the steel yield strength is 50 KSI. If the beam must satisfy the LRFD yielding flexural strength requirements, the maximum uniformly distributed omega load, which is our omega, is the most nearly what? So we want to find the maximum uniform distributed load, which is this omega. So we know we have, let's begin with what we're given. We know that we have the boat. W21 by 62 and what else we know the yield strength is 50 KSI so if it, yield strength we use FY right always 50 KSI for steel and we have the what else I believe that's it we are given the length here so I'll just denote that as L 25 feet and what we want to find it's going to be the omega which is this distributed load here right and we want units of kip foot let's keep track of the units kip foot so we know what we're essentially doing is finding omega that will sustain this beam that will not cause this beam to fail based on the yielding criteria because we're not concerned with lateral torsional buckling and we know it's yielding because we're focusing on the flexural strength requirements. So typically we're either looking at yielding, lateral torsional buckling, or designing for shear. In this case, we will focus on yielding for this specific beam. So for our solution, how do we begin? So what I suggest is we have to understand that the current moment that's induced, specifically the required strength of this beam is going to be the maximum moment right and this is based on the shear moment diagram so i won't go into that here but it's essentially always the following this always this equation so we use this equation here mu which is the ultimate moment that this beam experiences this is the moment right now is going to be the omega which is our distributed load times L squared over 8. And this is always the case for a beam with simply supported ends and a distributed load. So make sure you know this equation and memorize it for the FE. So that's always for a distributed load and a simply supported beam. So that's that. Now we know what we're trying to find is this, right? The omega. This is our unknown. We have the length we know the length is 25 feet but we do not know this mu but we know based on the design criteria mu must be less than or equal to our design flexural strength what that means is the design flexural strength is going to be our phi b mn this is the design it must always be greater than mu what we currently experience what this beam the low the moment load this beam currently experiences so that's always the requirement when we're designing that means what we can just do is find this value plug it in here then solve for omega that will be the minimum required distributed load for failure not to occur and that's what we will do. We will take this, plug it in here, and solve for omega. So now the tricky thing is finding this phi mn. And we know in the handbook, there's an equation under yielding. So for the design of flexural strength, phi b mn, so we're looking at phi mn, and we always take into account our phi value, our resistance factor. So that's going to be based on the LRFD method, the load and resistance 
factor design method. So phi always take that to be 0 0.90, and that's given under the yielding section in the FE handbook. And the equation for yielding is given to be as this. So we know we have a plastic moment, m sub p, and that's what we focus on. And the equation, the final equation for yielding, we just take Fy times Zx. Fy is the yield stress, which is given to be 50 ksi in this question. And Zx is the plastic section modulus about the x-axis. So we're focusing on yielding about the x-axis. And we're going to use the following table. So this table should be in the handbook. And we just go to our shape and we can extract a value for the Z, right? This is our shape. We extract a value for the plastic section modulus. So in general, we always have to account for the phi though. So what we do is multiply phi by this side. What you do to this side, you must do to this side. So our final equation, phi mn equals to phi b fy. So this is, there's a b here. We take fy times zx. So this is the equation and the design flexural strength. So that's what we plug essentially in here. So let's solve for it. Let's write the equation again. Phi B MN equals to the Phi B. We take Fy times Zx. And note, this is going to equal to our MU when we plug in here. That's what we want to design for. And that's what we plug in. So now let's find Zx and Fy. So I know Fy is given, right? Fy is 50 KSI. Let's just... Write that, 50 KSI. And KSI, I'll make sure to denote this as kip per inches squared. That's what KSI means. And we know ZX, let's go down, it's going to be this, 144. And it's based on this shape, right? Because we know we have a W21 by 62. So in the handbook, make sure to go to this table and find the shape and extract the value for ZX. It has units inches to the third. So let's write that ZX equals the 144 inches to the third, and we plug it in here. So now our design flexural strength is going to equal to the phi value. Phi is always 0 0.9, and that's stated in the handbook, the resistance factor, when we're looking at beam design of steel components. So make sure you know that, and that's in the handbook. So plug in the 0 0.9 for this. We plug in Fy is going to be 50 kip per inch squared. And we plug in Zx, which is the 144 inches to the third. So we know this cancels, and this becomes just inches, right? We take 3 minus 2, we get 1, so it's just inches. And we have kip inch, right? And that's the correct units for a moment, right? It's usually kip, the load, times the a dimension of length, right? Times the distance. So we have the correct units, kip inch. It's the units for a moment. So phi b m n, the design flexure strength. If we do the math there, let's see what I got. You should get 6,480 kip inch right so we have that as kip inch but what i'm gonna do now is convert it to kip foot because we know the final answer they want in kip per foot so we want units of feet for the length right so let's convert this to kip foot all we do is divide by 12 right there's 12 inches in one foot so i take this value divide by 12 and you get 540 kip foot so now we're basically done. All we do now is take this value. And what I'm going to do is, let me denote it. Take this value and plug it in here, right? In the original equation for the maximum moment. So we plug it in here and solve for omega. So let's do that. I'll just write the equation again, just to be clear. So we have omega l squared over 8 and we plug this the design in here 540 k 
kick foot. And we know omega is what we're solving for. The length of this beam is going to be the 25 feet, right? So 25 feet squared over 8. So now you just do algebra and solve for omega. And let's see, we should get about 6.912 kip. So we know the units are correct there because this is foot squared. Multiply by 8, then we divide foot squared should be at the bottom. So at the end, we should indeed get kip foot for the final units if you want to check that. So what this says is we need a distributed load of this amount induced on this beam to satisfy the LRFD design method for flexural strength. So that's all that says there. So we know it's going to be D. That's it. Thank you.